Hi everybody, welcome to our Thursday edition of the Virtual Keeper Chat. We're coming to you live from sunny New Bedford, Massachusetts. Hopefully my internet is working. I just got a weird notice that maybe it wasn't, but I'm hoping based on your little hearts and likes that you are seeing me and hearing me. Welcome to all of my familiar friends who have been joining us every week um, and maybe some new friends. It's nice to see you all here. I see some people already may have some guesses as to where we are just by looking at the picture. Um, someone said it was their favorite animal. Allison, our favorite animal. Sydney knows we're at the elephant exhibit. So we are here today with Emily, our Asian elephant. Oh, and she's already squeaking at us. <laughs> and she has her two keepers here with us today, Mike and Kay. And we're just gonna visit with Emily today. We will do Ruthie on a different day so that we can break them up a little bit. Uh, but she is right over there enjoying a little bit of sun next to the building, you can see her. She's enjoying this sunny day. Um, also uh, joined by Shara, our assistant director, who's gonna be doing most of the talking. Um, so, I'll let you take it away. Good morning, everybody. So you guys guessed it, we're at our elephant exhibit. This is Emily that you see here. And I'm gonna have the keepers do a training session for you this morning. This is something that we do with all of our animals uh, pretty much every day. It's one of the ways that we can keep our relationship with our animals uh, good and strong. And it also helps us work on behaviors that help us take care of them on a daily basis. So as they're going through, I'll give you an idea. This first behavior that they've asked for is a foot. And they've asked her to extend her foot. Foot care in elephants is something we do on a continuous basis. So you're getting an up close and personal look at Emily's right front foot. Every day when the keepers come in, they're checking the animals um, entirely. And elephants have four feet. So they're looking at all four of those feet, checking the nails, checking the underside. You saw Kay brushing it off so that they can get a good look. And so now Mike's gonna tell her all right, which means she can put her foot down and he's gonna ask for her other foot. And they do the same thing with that foot. Brush it off and get a good look at the nails and the cuticles and the pad, which is the bottom of the foot. So Carrie said this is Emily. Um, I don't know, do folks know whether Emily is an Asian or an African elephant? Anybody wanna shout out any guesses? give it a couple of seconds. You can, one of the best ways to tell is that it's the size of those ears. Yeah. So folks, Emily is an Asian elephant and people often say their ear shape is, looks like the country of India, which is one of their home range countries. African elephants have much larger ears and there's people that say their ears look like the continent of Africa. So Mike is asking Emily to do a little lean in, which means she's just lining up along the fence line. That gives us a good look at her whole body. And you're gonna see Kay sort of touching different parts of Emily's body. And that's again, so that we can check their skin and get a good look at them. Good. So the target pole you see Mike using has been in a couple of our virtual keeper chats. And basically when he's asking her to open her ear for him, She's touching that ear to that target pole. And today, what is she getting for treats today, Kay? She's getting peppers, carrots. There we go. There's alfalfa cubes in there. Okay. okay. So these are some of their favorites. We like to use part of their diet for training. Um, when we work with these guys, we want to make sure that they're not getting all sorts of extras. So we do use their diet for training. We'll have Carrie take a close up. Big Not many people get to see Big this. Enough. These are actually Emily's teeth. She's got some food in there, but you can see the two upper molars that she used to grind her food. And you can actually see here with her trunk up one of Emily's tushes. So Asian females, usually their, their tushes are above the lip line. Emily's grow a little bit longer. You wanna take a look at her eye while we've got her here? Sure. One of my favorite parts about these guys is their eyelashes. People spend a lot of money to get eyelashes that look like that, and these girls grow them naturally. 
I don't know if you can also see on Emily. Good. She has actually got quite a bit of hair or fur. It's sort of coarse. Most people don't think of elephants as being hairy and it really does vary from animal to animal. And you can see she's got some up near her ears and pretty much scattered all over her body. Back up so Mike can do a little more with her. Any questions coming through? Yeah, did you talk a little bit about Emily herself, um, how old she is? Sure. And... So Emily came to the zoo in 1968, and she was about four years old at the time. So she was little. Um, she has spent the majority of her life with us. She, she left us for about a year and a half while they redid her barn. And then uh, she returned, and she's been here ever since. She's now 50... Uh, 54, 55? 55. 55. So these guys, we don't know their actual birth date. Uh, the records don't show us that. So we celebrate their birthday in September every year. And Emily is now 55. Um, elephants can live into their 70s, but the average for most elephants is their late 40s. So these girls are on the older side. People are just really loving getting to meet Emily up so up close. You're getting a really good look at her, I hope. Um, we've had some really good questions come in here. Uh, you had talked about their hair a little bit. Some of them are wondering why they have that hair and what it does for them. So um, it sort of naturally helps with uh, keeping bugs off their skin. I don't know if you can get a close up of their skin here, Carrie. Um, and you might actually, depending on the light, be able to see some of the fur. It's, um, it, it can be very rough, but it's very sensitive at the same time. So you'll see lots of particles of dirt and hay. Elephants like to throw things up on their back and that helps keep the bugs off. It helps keep them from getting too much sun. Um, you know, this kind of fur isn't gonna protect them necessarily from the cold. Um, it's just more of, you know, one attribute of an elephant. Great. And like I said, there are some elephants that have a lot and some that have barely any at all. There is some questions coming in. You know, it's not nice to ask a lady how much she weighs, but certainly with an <laughs> elephant, it was an interesting so with question. Our, with our elephants, we weigh them once a month. Um, as they're older, it's really important as you get older to really sort of maintain your weight uh, and have it be a healthy weight so you're not putting too much stress on your joints, um, you know, on your, on your legs, on your feet. So we weigh them once a month, and how much did Emily weigh at her last weigh, Mike? It was about 8,600 pounds. Okay, so 8,600 pounds, which is within the normal range for her. We like to keep her around 8,000 pounds, and an elephant plus or minus 600 is, is not too, too bad for her. That's not actually a bad weight for her. Um, no. They were asking, are elephants quiet? Um, elephants have a whole range of vocalizations. Some we hear and some we don't. They actually produce a sound that is um, below the level that we can hear and it carries long distances. So that's infrasound. So there you get a good look at the tip of Emily's trunk. Uh, so there are times when you can see their forehead or head sort of vibrating or rumbling and you can't really hear the sound that they're making. You can feel it if you put your hand there and we'll try and get Emily to do that. Um, but they make a whole range of other sounds, happy sounds. Emily, I like to call squeaky because it sounds like a squeak. We'll see if Mike can ask her to make a sound for us. <laughs> so there's a little squeak. That's one of many sounds that Emily makes. They can also make sort of a roar or a rumble, um, a trumpet, and all those different sounds mean different things. The squeaky sounds that you hear Emily make are one of her happy sounds. We had a good question. Um, Sydney, age 11, was wondering, do, you, do they eat peanuts or is that just in the movies? So they will eat peanuts. It's not really one of their favorites. I think um, 
that probably comes a lot from people that are trying to carry small things in their pocket trainers when they're working with animals sometimes it's easy to carry smaller food items that the animals prefer so if I had to guess they probably use peanuts a lot in training our girls will they'll eat them but it isn't one of their all-time favorites do Different elephants have different personalities. Absolutely. So every elephant is different. They're very much like individual um, people. Um, so every animal has its own personality. And it's one of the reasons why the keepers have to take so much time building a relationship with these girls because each one is very, very different. Um, I just wanted to say a quick shout out to my buddy Judah who says Emily is super cute. Um, Moki's wondering if they are really scared of mice. Uh, well, elephants' vision is not their best sense. Uh, they're actually, their sense of smell is much better than their eyesight. Uh, <laughs> half the time, it, a small, something as small as a mouse running by them, they wouldn't necessarily even see. Um, but I wouldn't say they're scared. They're probably m more curious. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what Mike just gave Emily? So I think you guys in the last virtual keeper chat talked a little bit about enrichment. Um, I think you did an enrichment activity for your cats. We do that with elephants as well. This is a toy that was constructed for Emily um, by a local um, college, Mass College of Arts. They do toys for elephants every year. So this is one that was made that the keepers have stuffed. It looks like a treat bag. So basically it adds a little work into the mix. Elephants in the wild spend a lot of time foraging and moving around looking for food resources. Um, to sort of reconstruct that here, rather than just putting the food out for them to, to just walk up to and eat, they've added some additional complexity to it. She's got to work to really get this bag out. Oh! <laughs> and she's, she's still like, carrying she, what she thinks of She that. just blew in my face a bunch of boogers. So you can see how she's using her trunk to manipulate the bag and try and find a way to actually get it out of the toy. We call this a puzzle feeder. So she has to really figure out a good way to get it out. And this takes thought and obviously physical manipulation, moving stuff around. And it's going to keep her engaged for as long as it takes to get that bag out, which it's not coming out easily. So. This is a good example of how enrichment helps keep our animals healthy. Tegan, age eight, was wondering if you ever give her a bath. Yep, so skin care is really important for elephants and for an animal this large. So the keepers are checking their skin daily. They're doing baths um, frequently. During the winter months when it tends to be dry, we don't tend to bathe as much, but what we do do is apply mineral oil. And that's basically to moisturize their skin and keep it from getting dry. So if you were to visit the zoo, after the keepers had applied oil, they'd look very dark and over time it fades. Great. Um, let's see. How, uh, how many teeth do they normally have? So elephants have the two upper molars and they have two lower molars that they use to grind their food. And then those tushes are actually teeth. Um, so they have those. And elephants during their lifetime have um, five to six sets of teeth. It varies from elephant to elephant. And what happens is you saw her teeth before uh, they have what's called a tread on them, and as that tread gets worn down, um, the elephant's set that's underneath will actually push the teeth out, and the new set will come in, and that helps them to grind their food. Looks like she has some hay in there. Did, has Emily ever had any babies? Madison no, Harper, she, like nope, you know? nope, neither elephant we have here has had, uh, had calves or babies. And uh, Emily, to our knowledge, really has never even been around a male or a bull elephant. She's been here her whole life, uh, so she has not had any babies. And at this age, it would, she's a little too old. Do you want to just um, reintroduce everyone who is just joining us and how old sure. she is and yep. their life expectancy? Yep, so Emily uh, is an Asian elephant and she's 55 this year. 
and um, elephants in the wild tend to live uh, slightly less than elephants in captivity. The average age for uh, an elephant in, in captivity is 47 years old. So obviously Emily's lived past that. There are records and there are elephants that they've documented living into their 70s. So by really any scale at this point, Emily's considered an older elephant. We had some good questions just about her trunk. We're getting a good look at how she uses it. Um, how many muscles are in there? Oh, are there any guesses for that? Because that's an interesting one. There's a lot. The trunk itself has over 40,000 individual little little muscles. From what I've read, that's more than a human has in their whole body. Correct, correct. And they use that trunk um, sort of as an appendage. As a matter of fact, the tip of their trunk, if Emily gets to a point where she pulls her trunk out, we'll take a look at it. Oh, well, she's got a handful of hay, but you can see how she's using it. So she's curling her trunk around that hay, and you can see the very tip of her trunk is actually called a finger. And they use their trunk almost like a hand. They use it for, you know, lifting, for grasping, for bringing things up to their mouth, um, for moving things around. Their trunk has, a, they, they've got so many muscles in it, they're able to pick up something as delicate as an egg without breaking it, or they can pick up a three or 400 pound log. Um, someone had a question about why their life expectancy is so different between the wild and in captivity. So with a lot of animals, and this isn't just elephants, um, when, when they're um, in a facility like ours where they're getting great nutrition and medical care, they're not having to worry about predators, um, they tend to live longer. So animals in the wild have to look for food. They don't have somebody that's going to take care of them if they get injured or they get sick. They don't, you know, they, they have to be on the lookout for predators. So again, you know, animals in a facility like ours are gonna tend to live longer than those in the wild. And one of our seven-year-old friends has let us know, I believe he, he or she did some research, and maybe there's 59,000 muscles in the trunk? It could be. Yep, it could be <laughs> over 50. Yep. She is the best. Oh, Grace, age five, is wondering, can they bite or do they bite? So we say any animal with teeth can bite. Um, but again, you know, one of the reasons we work with our animals daily and continuously is to have that bond of trust so we don't need to be concerned as much with with biting animals tend to bite um, out of fear or to defend themselves so although they could bite uh, we're fortunate that our girls don't tend to show that sort of a reaction with their handlers and Madison Harper going back to that trunk um, you talked a lot about how they can pick things up with it how how do they um, take liquids up oh so that's a that's do a they good one. do they squirt it out or take yep. it all the way up through so what they do is they tend to suck it up into their trunk almost like a straw and then they blow it into their mouth or mine <laughs> <laughs> or Carrie's yep <laughs> Uh, she's just demonstrating so yeah so it is like a hollow tube in there so they're able to draw liquid up and then blow it into their mouths is there a way so we might be able to look inside her sure yes yeah. let's wait I know till she's, she's very gonna, busy with her yeah, hay she's gonna grab some hay let's let's wait till she pulls that uh, out we had some good questions mouth. about um, like if they swim as well. Yep, elephants are actually very good swimmers and there's been some footage that's been taken of elephants in the wild out swimming. Um, we here have a pool for them that they go into and they're very buoyant, which means they, they're good floaters. So here you can see the tip of, this was the finger I was talking about and you can see the two nostrils. She's <laughs> gonna blow in my face now. There you go. <laughs> and she's looking for treats. Um, Hannah, age eight, is wondering if there's anything that eats an elephant. Um, larger elephants that uh, become sick or are elderly would be more predisposed to some of those large predators that are found in the wild. It's really the calves that are at risk to some of the larger predators. Um, tigers are a big one. Uh, there's not a whole lot of animals that are large enough to take down a healthy elephant. 
Great. And actually their number one threat, unfortunately, is of the two-legged kind. So one of the threats for them in the wild is really humans. And that's because there's a lot more humans living in the same spaces that elephants live in. So what you see a lot of is competition between humans and elephants. Um, Sarah was wondering when the last time they swam in their pool or do these ladies like to swim? So it's still a little too cool to be, uh, for them to be in the pool. We tend to see them um, at the pool's edge during the hot summer months and going in. Uh, we found that Emily likes to go in towards the evening. So she, she kind of prefers an evening swim. Um, but more often than not, what we see them doing, she's just scratching the tip of her trunk, is uh, splashing themselves. So they'll go part way in and then use their trunks, trunks to draw up water and spray it all over themselves to cool off. Um, Xander, age nine, is wondering, um, do they get sick often or what is some sicknesses that elephants can get? So, um, again, elephants in the wild um, yes, run the risk of, us. you know, not being able to find the right amount or right kinds of food. And that can, you know, create situations where bec they become sick because there's just not enough resources. In captivity, in older elephants, what you tend to see a lot of is issues um, with arthritis, which people also get. Um, there are some other diseases that uh, sort of across the board, animals can get heart disease, kidney disease, and you usually see that in very old animals. In the wild, if nothing else um, health-wise is a problem for them, when they lose their last set of teeth, they can't maintain their weight anymore because they can't eat and digest their food properly and that's what tends to become a problem for them. Thankfully here, we're able to do things um, like chop up their food into small pieces, we can chop up their hay, so we can make it easier for them to eat and digest their food. Do these two elephants play together? Yep. So. There have been lots of times when we introduce new enrichment items where you'll see the elephants interacting. But one of their favorite activities on a rainy day is to sort of wallow in the mud. And we've got some great footage over the years of the two of them playing together in the mud, rubbing up against each other. Um, so we see them having fun together on, on a regular basis. Andrea, age eight, was asking about those Tusks. Yes, you can see her tusks. Yeah. Let's see if I can get it a little closer for you. Can you have her do a trunk again? Let's see, if we, let's see if we can see that. Maybe we can get her. I don't Come know on. if she'll open her mouth again, but we'll see. Maybe we can get a look at her teeth again. Um, for those of you asking, um, our friend in the back is Ruth. Yeah, she decided chewing. she didn't want to come join us this morning. So we'll do a separate virtual keeper chat with Ruth on a different day. They always get a choice if they want to come participate or not. Um, although she's now noticing, I think that Emily is getting extra attention and treats and may make her way over here after all. We'll see. Emily, can you do your But we will definitely feature Ruth on a different day. Let's see. We're at sort of the tail end where now she's got hay in front of her and she's gotten a bunch of treats. She's also doing a lot of chewing. So I don't know how close we can get, but Carrie, you, you may be able to trunk, zoom in the on, the tusk on the tusk there. Yeah, you can see that. Finn, age five, oh, is wondering um, who's the boss of the two? Um, it really depends on what's going on. Emily tends to be the one that can be a little more bossy than Ruth. But in situations where the elephants are unsure, believe it or not, Ruth is the one that takes, takes the lead. For those of you looking for Ruthie, she's in the back there. Enjoying some sun. She has the opportunity to come over here. She's just choosing not to yeah. right now. How old are they when they start getting tusks? Um, so as they age um, is when you would see their tusks growing. And they grow throughout their entire life. Uh, Emily's are short, they're below the lip line, but like I said before, Asian females don't typically grow um, tusks. They have tushes that are above the lip line. Um, we either file hers to keep them a little bit shorter. Because it is a tooth, we don't want it to crack on um, you know, something that would, would hurt the tusk. So we keep them a little bit shorter. 
Um, Andrea, is, uh, it does look a little silly the way she's chewing. She keeps opening her mouth because she's chewing some she's, hay. Yep, she's grinding up that She's hay. grinding some food up, but it looks different than when we chew. Uh, Logan, age seven, is wondering if she can color. Um, actually, these girls paint. So one of the things that the keepers work with on them, uh, with them, is an enrichment activity that involves painting. And so... We saw years ago that the elephants like to pick up sticks and they would pick up things and sort of make shapes in the sand or um, on the, you know, the walls inside their barn. So we had the idea to try and um, basically shape a behavior that they were already showing by actually giving them a brush. And once they figured out we didn't want them to eat it or give it back to us, we added paint, and so now actually they do create paintings, and they both have very different styles, and when you look at an Emily painting and a Ruth painting, after you've seen a couple of them, you can tell who did, did which painting. Uh, we've got a lot of questions about how they sleep, when they sleep, how long do they sleep? So elephants sleep at night um, would be the main time that you find them sleeping, and they will sleep laying down as well as standing up. They'll lay down for a few hours at a time and then get up and move around and they may continue to sleep standing up, very similar to a horse. Um, there are occasions where they will nap during the day. As animals get older, you tend to see them resting more. So we do find that Emily and Ruth um, do spend more time napping. You can, um, em, Ruth was in a spot where the elephants really like to nap during the day, during the cooler months, and that's right up against the barn where it stays really warm. And so occasionally you may come in and find one of the elephants standing by a, the shade structure or in a sunny spot and just be standing very still. And that's usually them taking a little bit of a cat nap. Do they have a favorite keeper? Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question, actually. So I think, um, you know, the, the keepers that work with the elephants all have really good relationships with the elephants. But I happen to know that Emily is very partial to Mike. And Ruthie is very, very partial to Kay. They've both been working with these guys for a long time. So over the years, they've really built up that positive relationship with them. Um, I'll take one last real cute question from Elena, age uh, three. Do they hug you? Do they hug you? Yep, so elephants are actually very tactile, which means they really do like touch, and you will find that they will reach out their trunk to you and sometimes wrap it around your hand or around your leg. Um, and so they definitely do show affection. Awesome, and Lindsay, or Hannah, age eight, that um, green thing in the background, that structure is their barn. Yeah. So that's where they um, can go when it's a little bit colder or at nighttime. Yep. All right. Well, we want to thank everyone so much for joining us today for our virtual keeper chat with Emily. Uh, like I said earlier, we will meet Ruth on a different day. She chose not to join us today, which is totally fine. Um, we do these every day at 11. I want to thank Emily and Mike and Kay and Shara for sharing so much interesting information about them. Um, we will be back again tomorrow with another fun, exciting edition. If you missed part of this video, we do post the whole thing afterwards on our feed and also on YouTube. Um, if you didn't get a nice close look at her eyelashes and her teeth, definitely rewatch the beginning because it was pretty awesome. And we hope everyone's having a wonderful day out there. We miss seeing your faces in person, but are enjoying um, visiting with you in this virtual space. So we hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye.